iPhone screens these days are amazing. There's no doubt about it. The resolution, crisp. The colors, wow. And the brightness, ouch. And while these three categories apply to every modern phone from Apple, Samsung, or Google, Apple's iPhone 17 line does something a little different that makes its displays superior. And it's not something I think Samsung will be fixing on the Galaxy S26 line either. I'm talking about how these displays dim themselves. Now, you might be thinking, Nick, what do you mean? If it's too bright, can't you just turn down the brightness slider? Well, yes, but mostly no. That's because lots of OLED displays from companies like Samsung don't actually get dimmer when you turn down that brightness slider. Now, your eyes may think it's getting dimmer, but what's actually happening is that the display is rapidly turning on and off hundreds of times per second, creating an effect that appears to adjust brightness but isn't actually doing what you think it's doing. This effect, known as pulse width modulation, or PWM for short, is known to cause headaches, eye pain, and severe debilitating effects in a percentage of the population. I'm one of the people negatively affected by this, and it's something I learned about three years ago after my Galaxy Z Fold 4 was giving me severe headaches and even nausea. Of all the phones on the market, Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy phones with OLED displays all flicker the worst. The PWM rate on these phones is incredibly slow, creating a harsh flickering effect that your eyes don't normally see, but your brain definitely perceives. If you want to see this effect for yourself, grab a phone that allows you to adjust the shutter speed on the camera and set it as close to 1 6400th as possible. This makes the shutter fast enough to very clearly catch the effect, and it's one of the many tools I use on this channel to help find the flicker rate of phones I review. This is important to know because it helps make it easier to understand why Apple's method is not only different from Google and Samsung's, but also why it's superior and, yet, not enough to fully solve the OLED flickering problem. That's because an iPhone screen does not fully turn off during the dimming cycle. Apple uses a mix of several different dimming techniques to soften the effect of the flickering. And you can see it if you look closely at the lines created in this video when using that 1 6400th shutter speed method I described. Apple's lines are a medium to dark gray, indicating that the screen does not fully turn off during the dimming cycle. Meanwhile, if you take a look at a Google Pixel 10 Pro and a Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra, for example, you can see that the lines are completely black. This means the Pixel and Galaxy displays are essentially strobe lights, operating at 480 Hz, but still producing a very jarring strobing effect to people who are sensitive to light flickering. Apple took things one step further with the iPhone 17 by introducing a way to disable PWM at low brightness. To understand what this means, you have to know how PWM dimming works. On Pixel or Galaxy displays, the dimmer you make the brightness slider, the longer the screen stays off during the brightness pulse. This fools your eyes into thinking the display is dimmer, when in actuality, what you're seeing is a display that only turns on for a fraction of a second and then back off again. Disabling PWM on an iPhone 17 swaps out this idea with actual voltage adjustments to the brightness, similar to how you might expect a proper light bulb or traditional display to dim. So while that's excellent and will undoubtedly help some people, there are a number of things Apple can do to further improve its display dimming methods for everyone. First off, that dimming rate needs to change. Like Google and Samsung, Apple uses a 480Hz rate, which means the displays pulse 480 times per second. While this sounds fast, research shows that 240 to 1000 hertz is the worst range for this kind of flickering as it's known to cause the largest number of problems for flicker sensitive people. Apple needs to either lower this to 120 hertz, which is the rate your light bulbs operate at, or increase it to 3000 hertz or higher. Nearly every other manufacturer aside from these three have already done that, and it's helped a ton of people in the process. That new PWM accessibility feature should change these rates, at the least, not just disable PWM at low brightness. Next, Apple needs to get the modulation lower, way lower. Right now, iPhone 17 models typically drop about 70% brightness during the on-off cycle, but phones like the OnePlus 15R have shown that this brightness dip can be only 5% or even less 
creating a near imperceptible flicker rate. As it stands, I can only use the iPhone 17 family when the reduce white point setting is enabled and auto brightness is disabled. Effectively, this keeps it at peak brightness all the time, but removes the ultra bright HDR whites and brings the full display brightness to about half its maximum rate. In other words, it's totally unusable in a dark room, but hey, being able to use one at all without getting eye or head pain is a huge improvement from one generation to the next, so there's hope for the future. If you enjoyed that video, head on over to the main channel, check out some of my other display reviews, and do the whole subscribe like thing if you like what you see. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.